talk about whistles. Now, it's not essential for you to be able to whistle. You can work your dog solely on voice commands and even trial your dog on voice commands. But I do think if you have a whistle, it's better to communicate at longer distances and it stops yourself from getting a sore throat. <laughs> uh, this is the whistle that I use. It's an A1 aluminium whistle from Logan Whistles. They're available in the ISDS shop or from Logan themselves, not sponsored. <laughs> It's a metal whistle. I prefer a metal whistle. I learned to blow a whistle with one of these. I struggled a wee bit with the plastic ones and I also find the plastic ones a little bit fragile. If you're anything like me, when things get under pressure, I can kind of clench my teeth and the plastic ones are a little bit prone to snap. When I first started learning to run a dog, I found this to be a huge barrier because I couldn't blow it and I just assumed that I couldn't blow it. But in actual fact, anybody can blow a whistle. It just takes some people a wee bit longer. So the best thing is if you get one of these whistles, just have it on you all the time. And every time you're alone in the car, in the bathroom, wherever, just blow on it. Whistle songs, do whatever you can. And you'll start off getting tiny, tiny little squeaks. And eventually those squeaks will turn to proper whistles. And then eventually you'll be able to actually get something that sounds like a proper command. The great thing about a whistle is that it sounds the same here as it does at 400 yards. The problem is when you come to use your voice at 400 yards in order to convey the volume, it makes you sound angry and frustrated and also all your neighbors can hear. <laughs> Whereas the whistle, you can convey that if you need to, but all your neighbors don't need to know that things aren't going quite like to plan. <laughs> right, this is an A1 whistle from Logan Whistles. Put your tongue just in front of the hole and the back of your tongue there. So you're almost making a wee pocket so that you can blow air through the hole. I'm like, I have my lips go there and the same on the bottom, so mm -hmm. in front of the hole. Right. And my tongue, I just press, push against What, with it. your front of it? Hold my tongue. My tongue's like, what? Oh my God. My tongue's like under, but right. not in front of the hole. Oh God, right. There's no pocket involved. All right, so we've learned there's wow, different yeah. ways to blow a whistle. Maybe, okay, maybe. you just have to put it in your mouth and hope for the best. <laughs> Someone told me that everyone can whistle with their fingers and I didn't believe them, but I sat myself the task to try and now I can get quite a good whistle out my fingers. It's up to you which fingers you use. I prefer these two. <whistles> Works pretty well. And what I do for that is I put my fingers in a V and just put them just in front of my tongue. Like that. Sort of roll your tongue back. <laughs> There's a lot of slaver involved. But in actual fact, if you're a farmer, and I guess in a lot of you are, sometimes your hands have been doing stuff that maybe you don't want to put your fingers in your mouth. And I guess a lot of you will work your dogs off the motorbike, in which case one of your hands is already tied up driving the motorbike. So in actual fact, this is often the most practical thing. So traditionally, I train all of the dogs on voice first and then go to add the whistles later. Now, I'm quite particular about adding whistles. I always add a stop and walk on first. Once upon a time, I had a bitch that I could only put a stop whistle on to and then it became very difficult to train her to any other sort of whistle because she had in her head that every whistle meant stop. So always do stop whistle, which is... That's like someone saying, whoa! And a walk on. They're the basic ones. And then what I do is I teach one side at a time. So once I've got the stop and walk on whistle, I will ask them for a flank and then I'll give them the whistle for that flank and keep them on voice for the other flank. Just for a few sessions and you find they quite quickly catch on and then swap over and put whistle on the other flank. We'll talk about commands. I think when you decide what whistle commands to put on your dog, you've got to look at your dog and decide what suits them. If your dog is very sharp, you probably don't want whistles that are too sharp. And equally, if your dog's nice and steady, you probably don't want softer commands. So for example, it's quite a sharp whistle. And is a softer whistle. My commands are 
to the right and to the left. That, now they're pretty universal on all my dogs and this season I have put some of my younger dogs onto different commands which are and Now that was just in case I wanted to maybe try some brace further down the line. I wanted to get used to it. Nails. The most common whistles used are to the right and to the left. But in actual fact, it doesn't matter what whistles you use, so long as you and your dog understand them, you can use whatever you want. <laughs> okay, you just have to put it in your mouth and hope for the best. <laughs>